Many of you are experiencing symptoms of eustachian tube dysfunction. You have plugged ears, popping sounds, ringing, some pain. Eventually, most of us ask the same question. How long does eustachian tube dysfunction last? I simply respond to this particular question by stating that it depends on each individual. Some of us have short-term eustachian tube dysfunction, while some of us have long-term eustachian tube dysfunction, and I'm going to explain both of them. As many of you are already aware, eustachian tubes help regulate the pressure in our ears. It helps drain fluid from ears through our sinuses. These tubes are extremely small, and when they become blocked, this leads to what we know as eustachian tube dysfunction. As I stated before, short-term ETD is mostly frequently caused by changes in the altitude or air pressure. Most people experience this change when flying, but you can also experience it when driving up a mountain, scuba diving, or even riding up an elevator in a particular tall building. When I was diagnosed with eustachian tube dysfunction, I was extremely confident that it was going to be a short-term situation. I woke up one morning and both my ears were incredibly clogged. It was only one ear that ended up healing in the process and the other ear lasted three years long. And that is what brings me to my next bit of information, long lasting ETD. And that is what I had to deal with for three long years. Eustachian tube dysfunction can also be caused by blockage and from excess mucus caused by allergies and illnesses as we may already know, colds and flus and sinus infections as well. The occasional case of eustachian tube dysfunction caused by these issues can frequently and should be treated with simple OTC medications as per the doctor. But my situation was much different and I know a lot of you are in the same boat. It took me quite a while to realize that my eustachian tube dysfunction was incredibly affected by the fact that I had terrible tension in my neck, my jaw, and my shoulders. I didn't understand where this was coming from. I started to research online and realized my posture had to improve. So that was my first step, being mindful of where I text, how I text, do I lean my neck down, do I sit up straight in the chair. All these things were ultimately affecting my eustachian tube dysfunction, and that is what causes a lot of confusion in diagnosing this issue. So I turned to red light therapy. Red light therapy not only helped me bring circulation into the area of my ear that was so over inflamed that it was causing reoccurring problems in that area. I started to research and figure out maybe these benefits could help me. After eight days of doing constant red light therapy, 15 minutes per each ear, even though I only felt discomfort in one ear, I had previously felt it in both. So doing that each day for eight days straight, I started to notice the improvement. I started to feel much better in my jaw area, and that ultimately led to me feeling better overall. So if you're like me and you're at the point where your eustachian tube dysfunction is not healing, it's been more than several days and now you're into months, try to do red light therapy. I will not guarantee that red light therapy will heal your particular situation. It's only a sense of trying out the machine and getting that approval from your physician to uh, rule out any other conditions you may be facing prior to using the device. But I can tell you right now, after doing it for eight long days and doing it consistently, I started to feel almost 98% better. It was the only 2% of myself that I needed to put in check like my posture, eating right, being mindful of my uh, stress and stretching and things that are very imperative and healing any condition that you may have. So many blessings and many healings to many of you out there dealing with this condition. I can tell you what healed me and it's up to you to do your research and see what will heal you as well. And I hope a great outcome for all of you. Alrighty, my wellness people, that concludes our topic for today. I'm going to go ahead now and step out of the J Wellness Studio and leave you in good hands with this video. I ask you all to subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest, greatest health and wellness videos, motivation, yoga, and meditation. But before I let you go, I'd like to leave you with one thing. Being well is feeling well. Feeling well is doing well. Doing well is living well. Take care, everybody, and happy healing.